Then one of the chief educators commented on the post where Kennedy made a joke about calling out SEDC playfully, commented and said something like, we'll see at the tournament. <laughs> in the octos, in the octos, guess who was our judge? That guy. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. I, I cannot blame you. Like, I cannot blame, like, I, can, I cannot blame a judge who thinks that, like, if it's in the gray area, especially, and most debates are in the gray area. Come on, like the, the calls are not so crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of, we, were in, we were we were in a panel where you had the team that I had first fought, and yes. I had the team that you had first fought, like at war. So like exactly. things can go. Debate is like things can go radically different. Yes, I had they were very I good. I think I think that if we were not unbeaten, we would have won. Mm. But Andrews won, and that was a round where I was like, okay, it makes sense because. I think we were on the same bench or something, and mm. they spoke before us, and we had the same case file. I think yeah, okay. I would say I analyzed the issues better, but if they wanted to give it to them, I respect that that yeah. particular call. But I mean, in the in the prelims. So now after the prelims, we go to the 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 auctions. in the octos in the octos, bro. Do you know that we went through by the skin of the tooth? Like, oh, they they had us. That. They had us. The judge, everyone on the panel had us going through, except the, the chair, and he kept them there for thirty five minutes, just explaining why we didn't, we shouldn't have gone through and look i do not care about anything we broke first in a tournament we were not bad it was a room that had in that tournament average teams there's no reason why if the, the team that breaks first like i mean if the team breaks first and they give a i'm probably gave a very good, good and very good showing mm. there, i don't think there was any way possible and i know what is different bro what yeah. is different because they are quality teams from top to bottom, so anything yes. can happen. But in PUDC, it's I don't think it's possible that the first breaking team cannot come second. If the motion was not fucked up when we were in closing, like there was nothing problematic about we we're in closing opposition. Mm. And this guy was basically saying that we shouldn't have progressed. So when I heard what happened there, like, and first of all, the judge that that was the chair of the room. I mean, now we are friends again. Yes. But was one of the, the people involved in the Ockham Gate scandal. So <laughs> I didn't trust it. And then I went to the CAP and I said, please, like, I've had his history with this person. Can you take them out? It cost a bit of a stare. They, yeah. I think they replaced, there was now an anger, I think, within the CAP. And they gave me a replacement who was going to be worse. Like, yeah. and I sound like a conspiracy theorist. I know this, uh, <laughs> but this is how, like this is what I know to be true. And we went to that round, and then that's where the problems began. When I heard mm. that we could easily have crashed out, I was like, "Hmm, this is getting crazy." Quarterfinals. I have no memory of the quarters. Like, uh, yeah, I think the quarterfinals. I remember. It was I think a I remember smooth sailing, right? Yeah, it was. It was smooth. Like the fact that I do remember it was good. Our room now. Closing government. That round <laughs> was a very good round. <laughs> was it the semis? You are speaking about the semis, the semis now, right? The semis. Yes, the semis. <laughs> that round was a very good round where I believe I gave my best pitch in the tournament. Let me recount, right? So there's Masheria. And yes, in OG. In Masheria we and his partner. Right? I, don't, this is bad. I don't remember the name. Ja yeah. Jabez. I don't remember the name. In yeah. OG. Then yeah. uh, Dollface. Um, yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Door face yeah. in O. They, they were not in that debate. Like, yes. What, I think that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were just overwhelmed. Then CG yeah, yeah. was you and Kumbi. Yeah. Then CO was myself and Michael. And it yes. was a motion about um South Sudan. Yes. Yes. That debate, I I didn't know so much about South Sudan, but I think I gave a speech that I was I was so proud of that speech. Like for me, that was my best speech of of, of the tournament, not the round five speech or any other speech that speech yeah. I, I thought was was like because i, I was stunned on I, I told you i'm competitive i like and there was for once there was a big crowd like yes. sitting down there watching our room everybody wanted to see and i was really turned on i was like mm, you have to and i gave <laughs> i think i gave a speech i was really happy with you guys were in 
um, closing yeah, closing up. The truth is that I felt like we were the only constant. I felt yeah. CG best. You guys were good. If I was a, if I was a judge, I would have given CG OG because I felt that you guys were CEO and you guys had the easier like you guys had yeah. it easier. Yeah. So I felt yeah. like you guys were good. Of course, you are you are you were weep. So like there's no way like like we we can kill you guys. Yeah. So I know that like, and it was it was a brilliant speech. But to be honest, Machara, that was the first time I was missing him in the tournament, mm. and he scared me. Like also, I, I mean, I know I said the crowd got the best in me, but Machara actually was he the lived that, that to it. Me, bro, he scared me a lot in that <laughs> round, and they I have a bias against teams I'm I'm competing against. Like yeah. I never have a problem because responding to arguments is never difficult for me. Mm. The, the the hardest part in a debate is separating yourself from the from the open the top half, and yeah. that guy was dropping. Bad, like yeah. So I, I was, I, I was really, I was really concerned that. But I looked at the panel and PADC, the politics. I looked at the panel. I was there was only one person I was confident in, and that was the person <laughs> that gave me the eighty-four speech. But that person, I think, <laughs> pretended <laughs> about everything, and I don't think the person was honest. So I put all my because I didn't know uh, panelists. I knew that the countries I knew East, Eastern Eastern mm. Africa was represented by three judges or four judges, something like this. I don't know how many West African judges were there, mm. but like I'm 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 a guy who like splits opinion. So I know many people didn't like me too, and I only had one person who I offended. Remember in the tournaments, the gen what tournament opened before the pre um pre pants. Yeah. I think we are offended her and a partner <laughs> who is the, the partner is that we, we now we now talk a, a lot like we're we are, we are, see we are friends. But I offended her and a partner and I gave an apology, but I heard that they thought that apology was half baked because it was in a round. Yeah. They had already been announced CAP and it was a very competitive round and we were going back and forth and they said some shit and we said some shit back. So that with the my history of being arrogant and being I think really annoyed them. When I gave the apology it was genuine, I thought yeah, but maybe they thought, yeah, like this is the chance to yeah, get the just, yeah. You know, it's fucked up, like all, all of these things. That, and that's why <laughs> I really don't like to bother myself so much about debates because I know when I get in, I, I will have these theories about certain things. But that round, I think, was a very good round. Yeah. Um, if for me, how I judge, you have, you have seen, you have seen me, you have seen how I judge, I've seen how I am on yeah. the panel. Closing opposition, I don't, I don't cut them any slack. Like you have enough, and I've been CEO, and I yeah. know what it means to me. I've won many finals. From closing up position, yeah. maybe, maybe six. So I know what it means to win there, even though the, the, the standards are incredibly high. And yeah. most of the time, in CO, I win unanimously. Like I don't do that split sheet. Like yeah. if I'm CO, I, that's what I'm striving for. So for me, like with CO, but the motion, to be honest, was gov weighted in my opinion. Yes. The motion was not gov weighted, but favorable for gov. And um, o OG like clung consolidated. On to I, I, I think it was one of Mashiri's best yeah. speeches he ever. Because like, got... and and for context, like when the results came out, OG went through unanimously. I think yeah. Yeah. everyone kept on because it was you and I in closing. Yeah. People yeah. just thought once we were closing debates. Yes. I, yes. I heard I heard that OG speech, yeah. and I was like, yeah. we have to <laughs> we have to no we have I to switch say, it up. I mean, I would also genuinely admit that when at a Kumbi speech. I mean, Kumbi was best figure of the tournament and deservedly yeah. so. But as a Kumbi speech, I don't think we were winning. Honestly, yeah. the way I, I perceive yeah, things. Same so way. it's also possible that maybe the call was fair. Maybe yeah. I'm just in my head. So maybe, the, but I, 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 I honestly still, because many times I was not at my best, but Kumbi carried us to victory. So I think that, it, and it's closing government. That's why when I made this excuse for that whole scenario, I I also said, nah, it can't be because closing government, you can even introduce new arguments. I didn't make any yeah. new arguments, but the analysis I gave, I think, was really, really good. I, I, I was so con I was so sold on that like yeah. speech and everything. For, but for me, it was a, it was a similar situation, right? I, I don't think I, I don't think and I mean it's typical of Michael. He probably knows this and I've said it a couple of times. He he would not represent what you want him to represent. He yeah. has ideas about. Yeah, he's a strong people. guy. He's a like I, guy. I realized that okay, shit, we came here, we prepping for um Kumbi and faithfulness, but the debate has shifted, and yeah. it looks like Uji is looking really, really strong. So by yeah. Kumbi's speech, I was like, okay, 
um i don't think anyone because og when you do a solid job you are going through so yeah. i think we can target <laughs> you guys yeah, then, yeah yeah so michael was supposed to go there and go and deliver that speech you know and he didn't mm. so by the time you came in there i was like oh shit, we are that was also something now. that was also something that played in my mind yeah i knew that your speech was good but i said look I had many, lots of new stuff. Michael took it to another yes. level. And that's why I kept on telling judges. Erasmus cannot do a miracle on this. <laughs> this is what we have gotten. This is what we have to respond to. So yeah. it was based on a speech. I think, like, you made it, you made it great. It's like, if that speech came, came first and Michael yeah. followed yeah. you. But Michael said something else. Like, he, yeah. he veered off. He veered off because he had yeah. it, and, and I know Michael. Like, I mean, I trained yeah. Michael. I, I mean, I knew, it, was, well, it was a similar story. In, it was a similar story in the final. And, and I think also I know that like once you just like you say like winning from CEO unanimously like once you begin to do it people just sort of begin to expect that from you yeah but I yeah. I also think that like yeah like I'm most, I, I felt very very lucky to have been in that position because if we were in any other position and he did that we were going to lose because yeah. as of yeah. by by the time you were speaking it was it was a gap bench debate I felt yeah. but I also knew that I had the power of the last word. And yeah, I knew that yeah, if yeah. you if you did have that power, yeah. we were not going to go through. Yeah. So, so it, it was no, so, it was so like the thing is for me, like, I mean, would I mind losing in a semi-final? In a I mean, we 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 finished with 24 points out of 27. I think at the it's time we set the record. record, we had good and um, great speaker points. So it was a satisfactory showing. I mean, I felt like I had made the point that I've always, I'd always said that I was one of the best in the continent. Like, yeah. so what more yeah. where our second best speaker, Kombi, was first. I mean, it always happens to me. Anytime I speak with someone, like... <laughs> you really yeah, 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 Kennedy, yeah. Kennedy won, like, two best speaker, um, two best speaker awards in Nigeria and the three nationals we spoke in. The second time, I think we were joint, we're joint second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're joint second or something. So, like... This always um, happened to me. So, I mean, but I knew that I got what I needed. Yeah. Like, I got that validation. I knew we could have gotten 25. I, I wanted us to get 25. Like, that was the number I set in the prelims, especially after the first day. But, I mean, it happened the way it happened. But I would have been, if not for the dynamics of that room, like, if yeah. I trusted the adjudication in that room, like, there's, I can imagine a way that we, we lost. Because I told yeah. you, like, I wasn't convinced by Kumbi's speech. Like, he yeah. he always had that bite in the prelims and even in the other rounds. But in that round, I didn't feel like that bite was there. Yeah. And it, it was international relations. He knew more about, more about like, international relations mm. than I did. So, like, I just I felt like I delivered, like, the killer blow. Yeah. But I just wish I could. And that's all I wanted. Like, just give a panel that I can trust. It's like, and it's maybe difficult because I've I've had run-ins with everybody, like I've had <laughs> so I think it was yourself. also difficult, yeah, for the sake. <laughs> so I understand, like, and I felt like I felt uh, I felt a bit I felt sad about it, but I, I mean, it made me lose some because I'm at the, at the point I was like, I, I think eventually after that that after I I lost, I think some people I started to see my relationship with some people improve because I think yeah. that they finally got vengeance. I would say, <laughs> and, and honestly. Some people started reaching out to me and I, and I said, okay, like maybe this was necessary for us to move on. But unfortunately, COVID came like immediately, yeah. like you lose your, you lose your joy, you lose your, yeah. your yeah. consistency and you just feel like you have lost grip of, of everything. And yeah. it just has to, it let's, just has to so. let's, 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 let's bring a, a little bit of sun, sunshine in here. And like, I just got permission from our producer that uh, we can continue a bit because like we were getting to the end so so let's let's bring some level of positivity in here you spoke about kennedy you spoke mm. about kumbi and mm. these are two speakers you've had great successes with but on top of that like within the african circuit we speak with each other quite a lot i know you yeah. and i had like a fantastic tournament to josie to accra and yeah. um, you've had good tournaments with bni etc i would like to put you on the spot mm. Who, and and I know you probably, <laughs> I probably know you're biased and you have the answer, but I'll put you on the spot. But mm. let me just maybe put two criteria. Mm. Who was your favorite to speak with? Mm. And who do you think uh, you were very successful with or you could have done maybe magic with? More or someone, magic. I didn't, someone I didn't, oh, more, more magic. Yeah. There, 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 there was someone I could have done more magic with. It's Karim. We spoke once mm. in the pre-pants. 
and it didn't it didn't go as planned. Yeah, it was a very hyped partnership. I yeah, must it say. was a hyped partnership. I think that we could have done better than we did for yeah. sure. And that's because the other partnerships you mentioned, I I won trophies. Did I win a trophy with BNI? No, I didn't. Oh. That's that's under home. Yeah, that's that. I, I mean, I, okay, I'll say I'll say BNI because we don't win the tournament with BNI. We always made the finals, but something will happen in in in, in that TTC. Uh, in the TTC, you know, I, I had won twice. Yeah, I, I, felt, I really felt bad for him because like, I didn't need the third one, but yeah. he, it was going to be his first one. So I think he deserved yeah. it. So I think with Bian, I could have done some more magic. Which partnership do I <laughs> like? Your favorite, best, the, best, best. I mean, the answer to this, the only way I can answer this question, I think, is to think of the partnership where. I the, the only the, honestly there's only like one way that I, I, I view this and it's it's BNI it's a BNI partnership and oh, the reason the reason is, is simple. yeah the reason is simple with the partnership with BNI I did not have to do anything trust me <laughs> and that's just how I see it like I did not have to do anything I did not have to do anything <laughs> zero like he just needed to you you know how BNI you've spoken with him many yeah. times. He just <clears throat> creates arguments magically. Out, out of thin air. <laughs> out of nothing. <laughs> and he just, like, the final of of that tournament, of of um, um, the third TTC tournament, I didn't prep. I was just sitting down and looking at him like this. I was in awe. I was like, this guy is crazy. Like, because <laughs> he was bringing some crazy... Um, ideas. Some crazy ideas and some crazy arguments. And I just said, bro, like, I think we have won this. And I just sat down when he was speaking. That was when I prepared my own speech, just listening to him cover some loopholes. So I think in terms of just the comfort, like, in other partnerships, I always feel like I need to show up. Like, yeah. it's because I, I, I like the dynamic. With Kennedy, Kennedy is a first speaker. Mm. So he's, in a way, like BNI. The problem with my partnership with Kennedy is that I spoke too much in many mm. times, and he listened to me way too much. Mm. I didn't know the kind of extent to which Kennedy was a thinker, or that I, I, apart from when I started speaking against him at other tournaments, or listening <laughs> to him, or educating. I was like, bro, like, where is this, where are these arguments when we partner? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And I had to call him out. And we started doing that thing where you prep for the first five minutes without mm. each other. So, we Kennedy, but he was, he was a pure first speaker, I was a pure second speaker, but he listened to me too much. In prep time, I presented the case, I presented the ideas, and then we... we. Yeah. But it was first speaker, second speaker, classical. Like, yeah. uh, with Kumbi, I like my partnership with Kumbi and with you, because yeah. we are all second speakers. Yeah. You yeah, know? Which is very annoying. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a case where we have... The constructive minds. Yeah. So even if we are making a constructive argument, we are seeing things deconstructively. Yes. So we can build a more impregn impregnable case. Yeah. So I think that's why. So if you're looking for beauty, then me and Kennedy. If I want to win a tournament, even beauty, me and Kennedy, me and um, BNI. Mm. But if you really want to win a tournament, if I really want to win a tournament, no matter where, it will be you uh, or Kumbi. Because yeah. of that second speaker approach. The partnership that was, you know, was similar to Kennedy and also similar to you and Kumbi was Prince Asamoah. That guy okay. is crazy. Okay, He's crazy yeah. because he also has a very deconstructive mind. But when he applies himself to speaking first, he has some, he has technique. It's, it's nothing like and, I've ever seen yes, before. And dexterity. He's the most unique speaker. That I've, I, I've I've ever seen because he has he has a, 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 a an argumentative dexterity he has clarity yes so he can easily fit in as a second speaker but and he has the mindset and approach of a second speaker but he has that incredible delivery delivery um yeah. of of a of, his, of when, a first speaker so all the partnerships yeah when Prince starts speaking for like first two three minutes I promise you you would not understand anything. You're just sitting, yes. what's this guy yeah. saying? What's he doing? Many times in the prep, even in prep, I'm like, yes. bro, what's I this? stopped listening to him in prep. <laughs> yeah, in, in the first round, I was like, bro, like, first round, he spoke. But when he went up there and he explained it, and at the end, uh, at, the end, end most, like, oh at the end, everything like connects. Everything ties up. Everything ties up. <laughs> everything ties so, up. It's incredible. So honestly, like, the thing is, I, 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 I genuinely believe that, 
like we, there were just so many talented speakers yeah. like in Africa. Like but, all but, of you guys. Let me, let yeah. me just put you at, at on the spot, right? Yeah. Excluding me, of course. But yeah. which which was your? I know you've probably had a lot of partnership with like novices, etc. But that's out yeah. of the books. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. Which was your worst? Oof. <laughs> Mm. Excluding me. <laughs> nah, of course. We won. So it was impossible for that to be my worst. Hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> I mean there's a very there's an there's there's a, there's 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 an easy um uh, there's an easy answer. Of course, the the HWS, the person I spoke with the HWS, I mean no, the <laughs> no, I know that's it's, not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, who was my worst? Huh. Oh you, you just made everyone good. Yeah, it's it's really difficult because for me, like if I spoke with someone, it's either I respect you mm. or you respect me yeah. very really well. So if you respect me, you will listen to what I say and deliver it how I say. It is mm. how I spoke with I spoke with a roots, a rookie, like she did well at the nationals, and I spoke with her yeah. roots. Um, I've forgotten her son, but we are, we are we are still friends. And I just say do I just say do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and it went, I, I think that there's, there's a worst, but I, I, honestly, I can't think of, any, you of, can, any, of let, anyone now. Let, it's really difficult. Let me, let me maybe just uh, to, to, uh, twist it up a bit. Yeah. Who would you say um, were your biggest rivals hmm. um, during your, your time? And uh, how, how do you think both of you came up in terms of uh, comparing your, your legacies uh, after all of these years? Who would you say gave you the toughest David, time? David Ejim was <laughs> a very serious problem. Like the guy, uh, the guy in in prelims, you we couldn't beat him. Like yeah, he was the one that made me realize that look, there's just a level of intelligence that comes with age. <laughs> like that's what I told myself. <laughs> I said, when is that I I just said, yeah, it's older than me. Like I mean, if I'm at, at his age, I'll I'll be whooping people's ass because I mean we're 18, 19. Like it's a factor because I think my, now I think I'm more not intelligent, mm. but I think more experienced, more like my, my thinking is more detailed, more refined. Mm. So David Ajim was I think David David Ajim was oof, David Ajim was it's a nightmare. Honestly, it was a nightmare. He, it was a nightmare. He, like there were just positions that, but in, the, but in, I, I think I, he, he won. He beat me. I won him. I won like five or six times. I beat him like five or six times in finals, like five times I would say. Yeah. And he beats me twice, max or or once. I, I remember yeah. very vividly him and Hawao. Yeah, uh, yeah, in that genesis. That, that, that genesis. Yeah. And I think that's when. That's the. I think that's the only time. He beat me in a final. I beat him in World War One, World War Two, Masters yeah. Round One, Masters Round Two. Um, I beat him. Yeah, um, did he speak at TDC? I don't know. But but I think yeah, I, I, I get. I yeah, I, I get what you mean because like yeah. David Ejim was the kind of guy that anytime I saw him on the tab, there was a time. He said he was coming for a crowd pin, and and I I, I wanted to win that crowd pin. <laughs> I started having dreams where like I, I see him yes. speaking, yes, like and yes. people like I was I I, I talked to Andrews about it where you know like these days there's a culture of respect yeah. within the statute which is annoying. Where if you're going to yeah. tournament, people are like, ah, oh, faithfulness is coming to the tournament. I yeah. probably won't go because you beat me or something yeah. like that. And I always say it was devastating within those yeah. days because yeah. someone like David A. Jim is coming and I'm like, how, <sighs> how do I beat him? You're just praying you get the perfect position, perfect motion, so that you can say something. <laughs> Look, the, the, the only time that I feel like I beat David so, so, so convincingly was Hogwarts. The final you guys yeah opened. yeah yeah i don't yes. know what came over him that day but he was i think he was he uh, drank yeah. something he was, he, <laughs> which is that's surprising because he was speaking with bni so you think yeah, I, I, like... I, and we beat them in round the final round yeah I beat them in the final. so that was when i was like okay i think that was when i finally felt like okay like i have i have caught oh, up sure. with this guy like i've, I've really Matured. Because other times I'll win, but I don't know, like it's it'll be a stroke of luck. Yeah. So maybe I'm in CO, 
Like just and if I'm in seal, I, I think I was the one who knew how to whoop his ass when I was in when I was in seal in finals. Yeah. Sometimes it would be OG and it was it was time where opening like OO, OG. Like I knew how to contest. And I mean the judges, like and also I will not lie, like sometimes I have complained so much about the political dynamics, but it's impossible to win 13 trophies all 100% fairly yeah. and distinctly. There were times I know the political dynamics favored me. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not delusional enough to think that, that that didn't happen sometimes. So I know that, I think that there were one or two times where he should have won, but I think the, 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 the political leanings of, <laughs> of, the, of, 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 the, of the panels just favored me. The, 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 the situations, the institutional politics, yeah. the things you don't see. I think sometimes, like one or two times it that favored me. But I think, if not, maybe it should have been closer. But mm. I think also in finals, David, sometimes finals, judges just want pragmatism. Yes. You know? And David sometimes is in his own world. Yes. And when the discussion, when that, when the chips are down, it's a final, and everyone is just, is there. Like, there are things that judges want to hear. Like, all that the, all the things that David does sometimes yeah. don't really, doesn't really matter. So I, I, I think there's all, there, there was also some times where if this round was a top room and there was a specific panel, he mm. would win. But it's a final. You get, final judges need to hear some yes. things. And so I think sometimes he struggled with those things. Or some, and sometimes he was so he had to have partners who were just a, a huge fall of him. Yes. And I will always speak with people that were more balanced. Yeah. So there, I think there, I, I don't think I was. I, like when you look at our records against each other in finals, you think I was way better. But I think all these dynamics and he, I think, also didn't care so much about like winning the bling so yeah. much. And he wanted to win, but I think he, he knows cared about that he sharing, so, sharing his yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, he really cared about that. So for me, that guy was a big problem. But there are many problems. Like every time you go to a tournament, eventually you started becoming a problem. I was like, <laughs> guy, like. I, <laughs> <laughs> Can you get out of the way? Like, um, um, BNI, yeah. as, as smart as BNI is, I liked facing him. And yeah. I told him. Because I, I also felt like he had the same problem with David Ajit. Yeah. Too smart, yeah. too, so much volume, and he needed sometimes some partners to just bring down yes. what he's saying. Like, but if, like, sometimes I listen to him, and I, I, I think one time I, I gave him an 88 or 87, something like this. Like, it was a speech I'd never heard before, and yeah. I've listened to so many speeches, and I'm like, this guy... But when I gave him an 88 or something, the, the, one of the judges in the panel gave him a 79. And I was like, bro, like, come on. <laughs> you so don't know they, they, that, and they, say, they say, oh, I didn't understand what he was saying. And yeah. I said, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so I think, Biana, I liked facing him because I knew how to manipulate panels, I knew how to. I knew the things that I could clash with him. I, I knew how to make like. But Karim was also a problem, yeah. a big problem. Karim, you, you from OG, from OG, unpredictable, yeah. so unpredictable. He, he he dominates the room. He makes the debate his own. Yeah, like he he draws the parameters, draws the framework. So it is debate. You have to find a way to. You cannot ignore him. Yes, you have to find a way to meet him where he wants you to meet him. Yeah, and win you. Win him how he wants you to beat him. You understand? Yeah. So, and it's very difficult for, for, for people to, um, you know, to to do that, to have that exert that much much yeah. control. The only speaker who could exert that much control in the debate was David and Jim. Yeah. But yeah, somehow he didn't get OG so many times when it mattered. Yeah, I, I mean, like when when you speak about winning, I think it's one thing I learned very quickly with him and Karia that you, especially with debates, you didn't have to be like the best all of the time <clears throat> that it, it, it's it was just about how you position yourself it's the game like and the game is not just yes. only yes. intelligence it was yes. it was different things and yeah, you yeah, care yeah, about yeah. winning it changes yeah. your 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 dynamics and the way you prepare yeah. for those things yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah absolutely. i mean it's it's a good segue to start talking having the goats discussion and i know you've already alluded to a couple of people whom you think uh mm. are goats and I know it's it's not a sensitive topic for you, is it? Because like <laughs> I'm sure you could easily choose yourself. But I mean, the, it's open for you. Who do you think ultimately is the goat of African debates? Who do you think is the goat of world debates? <sighs> I think that in the world on the world stage, I I I I think that. Look, any, anyone that's... I mean, I know people are... 
people have some people are debate heads, debate aficionados, and debate theorists. And yeah. you know, when this question is an, is asked, they want to give certain answers. But the debate code is MDG. <laughs> I don't think there's a desk. If if I want to be you know sentimental or sound like some kind of debate theorist, I'll say maybe Shamuli or uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Um, Dan, Dan Lahav, I think you, you, I, I think you can make it. You can make a, a good case um, for him, but I don't know. I don't think you're. I think maybe if with Dan Lahav, you might you you will seem you will seem like um, what's the word? You would seem to have recency bias if you say Dan Lahav. Yeah. But Dan Lahav is a unique speaker. I have never seen anything like like Dan mm. Lahav. Like I think what he represents in debating is incredible. Yes, I don't think I, I think like ESL like no one no one comes close. He he set the bar high and he, he was just amazing. So we, so Dan, but but look, MDG like he would, he never ran away from the grind. Like yes, look, he always showed up. There was a time where I saw like some big Facebook controversy. He 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 got he did a master specifically because he wanted to contest in a tournament and people were like, "Don't come!" And he said, "I'll be there." <laughs> and he said, I, "I will win." And look, he it was just numbers, like longevity. Yeah. This guy won almost everything, she proved himself in almost every single stage. Like it's like LeBron. As much as I don't think LeBron is a good, I think Michael Jordan is a good, but this guy has been dominating for eight, for 19 years, 20 years. He's been fantastic. He's he's been he's showed up in the most finals. Um, he has not not the most finals, but he showed up in ten finals, uh, uh, ten or eleven finals. Yeah. Just kept on. So I think if you're looking at he, he's the he is by all means the Levon James mm-hmm. of debating. The question is, do you think Levon James is the goat of basketball? Some people say Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan had a shorter career. I think yeah. played fourteen yeah. seasons, took a break, came back, and people still say that just based off what they saw at his best, yes. you know. That he was the greatest. So you can say that, and if you say that, then I've watched, um, I've watched some speakers. I mean, now like I'm so rusty, I cannot remember, um, I cannot remember so many names. But like Shawn Lee really stood out to me as someone. Yeah. I think when I think now, Shawn Lee Ashish, Ashish, yeah, Ashish yes. that 2015 run was just exceptional and incredible. And like every speakers I've seen just once, or I, I saw Fred Cowell, I saw the Fred Cowell speech LSC final. Like I, I think that guy has to be somewhere in the conversation. Um, I, I cannot remember the guy from Oxford, who I think was in the 2008 finals and 2012 EUDC yeah. final, but he really dominated his era. Like if you ask me this question four years ago, I would have given you so many names, but now you know how it is, but I've been involved in too many things. <laughs> a bit took a bit. But I think that Michael Michael DG is the LeBron James of debate by whatever standards. He has yeah. won the most Best Speaker Awards. He has won the most trophies in debating history. He has had the long, probably one of the longest careers in debating. He kept showing yeah. up. So the question is, again, do you think, do you see things from the lenses of LeBron James being the GOAT for his longevity and his incredible dominance over an extended mm. period? Or do you see things more like the Michael Jordan perspective? But yeah. even then, Michael Jordan had a huge sample size and had Michael Jordan won six, went to the final six times, won six, six, six times. times. Yeah. Who has that kind of impeccable record? You cannot just mention any name and say, yeah, this guy was amazing. This guy had the greatest high. I, I had one of the podcasts where somebody said a particular speaker was the GOAT because at Worlds they were almost unbeaten and, and went on to win or something like this. But yeah. no, like you, you had one great tournament. Some people who speak at Worlds and retire, but please, when I hear any name apart from MDG, I think it's I think it's disrespectful. Like, that yeah, guy just amazing. Yeah, it's like, fair. He's incredible. He's he, incredible. He, he, yeah, so yeah. But let's come let's come down to Africa. I, mean, I think this is where Africa, you get tighter. Africa. It's really, really tight because well, not think, excluding yourself, by the way. Yeah, yeah I mean <laughs> <laughs> I think that if you weigh things from Africa, there are many things that matter. I think based on the 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 large history of debating, yeah. I think that based Weighing based on the 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 the, the preponderance mm. uh, of of years of dominance, mm. I think it might be in in some way fair 
for the goats to be from SCDC. Yeah. But yeah. if you look at things, I mean, I just spoke about MDG mm -hmm. right now, and I think prolonged dominance over a period of time, over different generations. If you look at things from that lenses, there are two candidates for, for that, for being the goat, mm -hmm. like proving themselves generation, 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 generation. And I think it, it will be you and myself mm. from those lenses. Because, I mean, you won two PADCs, three, two or three PADCs you, back to back. I think you have, you, you were the, you were one of, you are, you are one of the first to really get into the global stage. What you did at Walls, top 100 speakers from West mm. Africa. How many people won PADC twice? I don't, I don't know if there's anyone who won it twice. Um, I think at the point with how... No, nah, I, I think I, I don't think I, I really have a case like based on this metric. I think like to to be the ultimate good, maybe you have to win PADC. Particular. I mean, I won thirteen trophies, and all those trophies, most of them were all of them were acclaimed. Hogwarts. Mm. I mean, if you win Hogwarts, nobody can say you can't win yeah. PADC. I I broke first at PADC or stopped speakers and everything. So, but you still have to find a way to do it one way or the other. So I think if you look at things, I'm, and with MDG, there's no sentiment. There's no what. If like it's not about the heart, yeah. I think at some point you just have to look at the numbers. And if you look at the numbers and what they, how people have, who has pushed the frontiers and pushed the barriers and taking things to the next level, then I think, um, like I said, the conversation has to be you. I'm close in that in that sphere at the time, based on what yeah. I did, like how I stretched things, just numerically. I think I I, I, put, I, I did my, my bits in pushing the fantasy, but, yeah. but I genuinely, and I'm not trying to be humble, you know, I, I have no, <laughs> I, I, I'm not just push humility. But I, I do think also that based on that based on the, that conversation, like based on this yardstick, I have the most solid case. I think you have the most solid case for that. Yeah. I, but I, then, yeah. yeah, if you look at things more sentimentally, yeah. and you say, if this guy wanted to do it, he could have done it. Yeah. You know? Then you talk about David Ajim. Yes. Because he dominated everyone. Yeah. He made PADC finals. He was the first West African to make PADC finals, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, in 2016. In yeah, in, 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 yeah, in Zimbabwe. So, and I think if he stayed longer and he applied himself, he could have done everything that, yeah. that, that, that needed to be and, if they interested in him. And so, that's that's what I wanted to come to, right? Because like, the, there's there's too much context to, um, to to just put around things, which makes it very difficult. It, there's also sort of an agreement that, um, towards the tail tail end of things, like things became easier. But it's also always about perspective, right? Was it really easy, or does it look yeah. easy because we are doing it? So yeah, yeah, yeah like this. True, 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 true. Yes. I, Exactly that. Like, I think. I mean, of of course. Like, you you tend to there's nostalgia. You tend to weigh errors over errors. I think it's undisputed that the era of 2015, 2016, 2017. That's when debating was at the peak in West Africa. Yes. But I've listened to lots of the young guys, and I think that they have caught up level wise. Yeah. But the truth is that many people will never give them the respect that they deserve yeah. unless yeah. they pay attention to them. Because we saw some of these guys. Some of these young guys, we beat them over time and time yeah. and time again. I found the guys that made final. So it's really, really hard to just give them that. And the truth is that if debates happen again, debating tournaments happen again, and all the guys come back, it's possible that they could still beat these these guys oh, who I are doing so. so well now. I think so. But but they have managed to ev um, revo evolutionize um, revolutionize themselves mm. and their era. They have managed to get themselves more in tune with the game. And it has taken lots of investment. Someone like um, Elisha has invested yes. thousands of dollars for that. So you have to give him credit for that. Like yeah. we had the chance to make the same investment, but um, yeah. not everyone was willing to do that. So you yeah. cannot just discredit all he has done and the effort mm. he has made to prove himself. But I think if you look at it from ability, pure ability on his day, wake David up from the sleep, from his sleep, and he could be the best in any tournament in Africa he wanted to be. Bro, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm just mentioning um, West Africa. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. But I think you still apply for for West Africa. No, I'm, I'm Southern Africa. Like, mm. come on. Like, um, um, I think that, 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 that there is David Harris. 
it, it, for me, who I will rank um, high, he he didn't he never won PADC. You won it twice. So I mean, you can have that conversation. Mm. But I think in terms of the pure ability, because it's the ICDC speakers, some of them didn't have the immense longevity and immense global yeah. success. But the, the, the speakers I really respect, uh, um, Ati, Ati was incredible. Jimmy. Jamie, Jamie, I think, has a very good case. We you definitely need to get Jamie on the podcast, right? Yeah, you guys have to bring him. Um, Jamie has a great case. I think that he sees himself as the GOAT and <laughs> for good reason. Um, Jamie can make that case. He also has global success. He competed yeah. at many international tournaments. Um, Yash can wake up and say he was the GOAT. Yeah. He had a peak. He seven breaking seventh at Worlds. That's he has a, a case. Um, for that, he won PADC. No, he didn't win, but he was best speaker. Broke first. I think he spoke in just one or two PADC. No, he won. He won in yeah, 2015, 20, right? 2013. Um, David Ajim was second okay, yeah, best 2013, speaker. Yeah, yeah. So then in 2014, 2014 was where he was where he he mm -hmm. lost to the to the bots mm -hmm. Botswana and um, Botswana A. So uh, he has a claim. Elisha Kunene has a claim. Maybe on the on David Oliver Dixon might wake up one day. And <laughs> I, I, I think he, he he has a place. I think he's tough. But I, say, but I mean, like, it's, like yeah. let's be very honest. It's, if it's yeah. the good conversation, yeah. like I yeah. mean, we we can have like candidates. Yeah. I think just narrowing it down. I think there are people whose names you cannot mess with. Yes. Right. Yes. In West Africa, I think you have to mention. You have to mention BNI. BNI, you have to mention a gym, you have to mention me, and you have to mention you. Yeah. If you don't mention any of these guys, then I think you're you're joking. I think the other guys like um Kareem Andrew Oh, come on. <laughs> no, I, think, I think I think I think Andrews, yeah, I think Andrews has as much of the claim these days as, as I do. Like, I mean, now, yeah, you have to mention Andrews because yeah. in his era, in his generation, he has no one, no one is close. Like, yeah. the way I see. So, I think if I'm mentioning five names, BNI, Jim, me, you, and Andrews, um, yeah. and I'm sorry, Andrews, like you're here, but I, I miss you. And, like, it's, it's old man syndrome. But yeah, Andrews has as much of a claim, more of a claim than any, than, than, than any of the, the old guys because. I mean, Karim and, B and Abu Rasta and Aurelia and Elik Plim and everybody, they they did exceptionally well. Elik Plim yeah. made finals and everything. But, I mean, I think you have to be sustained. You have to win, mm -hmm. have multiple trophies, be sustained on the big stage, have some experience globally. Some of these guys didn't debate in any, like, okay, I think um, Abu Rasta debated at Waltz once and, and Aurelia too, and, and they had a decent yeah. showing. But yeah, I think these five names right now you have to mention um Biana, Eugene, myself, you, and Andrews. I think yeah. I mean maybe there are maybe there are other names I'm, I'm missing, but this seem like I mean you can make the case for any any of the other guys and it's your it's, it's personal opinions, but I think these names are really um an S to gold awesome. the gold of, of time. Awesome. We, um, we, then if you, if you expand it, sorry. Yeah. To expand it and include like Southern Africans. I mean, Macharia has some kind of place. Oh yeah, so, we almost missed him. Yes. Yeah, Macharia has some kind of place. I think if you th think of East Af East African debates, he's there. Then in essay in essay, you think of David Harris, Jamie, Elisha, um, um, maybe Ar Arti, and Brind, Brinde or Brind. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's not her name, but she, she was yeah. exceptional. She broke at Worlds yes. twice or thrice yes. or something like this. So I think these people, like, you have to find them. But the conversation can go depends on the criteria. Yeah, but I think. And I think that's like, that's why this podcast is very important because uh, some of these names which are coming up are names which like a lot yeah, of people have not, know, you know? don't yeah. know of, yeah, but like exceptional stories behind uh, uh, behind yeah. them. We will be we'll be wrapping up the conversation very soon. I, I admit it's been yeah, we can yeah. we can talk about this for five hours. I I promise you. Yeah. But I know we've made a lot of reference to youngins and the state of debate right now. Yeah. There are just two questions I want you to tackle at once. One, what 
do you think we need to do now to get debate back to that level? And secondly, what would you say was the key ingredient, and particularly because it would be very useful to those who are coming up and who want to emulate your level of success, what would you say would be the key ingredients and things to start doing in terms of personal growth? So the question is in two dimensions, personal growth, the things you need to do, and what we need to do in general um, to put African debates back to where it needs to be. With personal growth, I think you cannot cheat the game. Love the game. When you love the game, if you love a woman, you will go lengths to learn how to please Andrew, her. Andrews has a different experience, but we can talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> so, if you love a woman, you will go lengths. You will do. You will. You will try to find out the things that she likes. You will learn things about her, about her family. I think it's the same way. If you love something, you have to know something. Mm -hmm. Like you have to know. Be, you will be updated. Like you just love debates. Like it's food. It's like football. Mm -hmm. If you love football, you want to know everything that's happening. You want to watch all the games that are happening. I watched. If I watched. I've watched hundred to two hundred debate videos. Mm -hmm. Videos you don't know existed on on YouTube. And <laughs> it's a way to just improve your intelligence, like organically. You you don't know how things. Some vocabulary is incorporated in. You don't know how you just keep improving and growing, you know. So if you, but you can't do all this except you love it, mm. and not loving it for anything for the glory. Sometimes I mean it's fine to love it for the glory, just wanting mm. to be exceptionally badass. But if you have real genuine love, mm. I think debate debate is going to reward you one way or the other. But many people who compete don't love it. They want to travel. Some people want to travel now. I think the pay adjudicators. So some yes. People don't <laughs> yeah. There are many reasons why people debate now, but most people don't 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 love the sport. They just hang around because they see some people just hang around because this is the only place they feel valued and useful in their lives, mm -hmm. you know. But like the people, some they even look. I think sometimes the people who are the most successful are the people who genuinely yeah. love debate. And the, for me, that's what worked for me, and that's all I can say because hard work and all these things are basic. I mean, the, I wrote an article. Like, five years ago, seven secrets of West Africa's elite debaters. I think I have some more like banal stuff there. Like some yeah, We need more articles from you, to be very honest. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best to start it. So that article, I think, says something. I also spoke about loving the, the games. Bro, yeah. I told you, like, there was a time where I knew all the tabs. I know what, like, some of the guys will, will ask me, yeah, Fifonas, what did I score in this round? I know speaker scores from LS, LSE Open 2012. I know that there were 88 speeches. I know there were eight, just look at the top. There were 88 speeches. There were, there were eight, 86 speeches. The best two speakers of the tournament in a round. Um, Larry C. Wu and his partner, they, that was the prime minister, gave 79. So mm. I wanted to know why. I was like, how did they give 79 when they averaged like 84? I mean, they came 14. Like, I knew so many things I didn't have any business knowing. But when you start knowing the names, like you would, you would just be on a, on a different yeah. wavelength. Yeah. And debating is a place where many, not many people work hard. So if you really love it and you're obsessed with it, it will pay off. Mm. Like that's what I can say. For the African circuit to grow, I think that it's a, it's a, it's a more difficult question to answer. Mm. But I think now, like there's progress, there's strides. I think there's a huge opportunity because yeah. I think the the bridge now like, there is now a bridge between West Africa, like Africa generally, and and the global debate scenery. So I think that there is an opportunity that people have to try to, to, to latch on. I don't know if the seriousness is the same. I don't know if the competitiveness is still the same, but I think people have to be as serious, as competitive. Mm. Um, and just, I don't know, like because uh, people will say debating is an expensive hobby. So I think at the, at the end of the day, you cannot escape the need for money. I think that there might have to be a need to, like, to, to consolidate like debating in you know some financial incentives i think i think it's a more broader conversation than i can answer like in in two minutes or one minute but there are, there are just many things that need to be done but i do think that we are at you know we are at a very we are the, we are the crucible we are at a very important threshold and i think if people are more committed like and do the things that we did in this era I think that Af like African debating can can go to the next level completely. I, I think I think this is really exciting, and I think you've you've hit the nail on his head. I mean, so we'll we'll just be wrapping up the conversation, but just to be able to also highlight the um importance what debate did in our lives. And w whenever I speak to people, people ask me about debating and debating in Africa. I'm like, okay, um, 
debating is viewed quite differently over here as a sport i know it's competitive it gives you some other things for your extracurriculum some max and people view it like it's their summer plans yeah. i was telling people how debate is very transformative especially in the ecosystems in which we exist um yeah. i know currently you're a sports lawyer and we don't have what people don't know, we don't have many sport lawyers in africa which means you belong to an elite core, especially within Africa, especially, if, for example, in the future, we want to build our sports industry. It is yeah. people like you, pioneers, who have now worked with Real Madrid uh, um, University, have watched the team train, have interacted with the president. I saw a picture of uh, you, uh, you and the president, uh, Fiorentina Perez, if, if I'm being very, very yeah. co correct. And you work with one of the top law, law firms um, in the world. All of this through the, through the opportunity of debate. I just want you to talk people in in just a minute how much of an impact debate has had in your life in being able to bring you where you are and even where you see it taking you to. Yeah, I, I wrote an article again in 2016, why we should all be debaters. And in that article, I give like I wrote I profiled many people who are done who are debaters who are done a lot of things. I mean Kennedy now will tell you, Kennedy, Kennedy, my, my first debate partner, wants a startup that raised $12 million. Um, mm. dollars. Like, you know, yourself, you're working with Bank of America. Aurelia mm. is working with also a big multinational, multinational. Like, I think everyone is doing really, really good things. But when, when, when you see something change your life, people do not, do not really understand. But debating changed my life completely. Changed my priorities, changed my thinking, changed... Like, the decision to be a sports lawyer is one that... I would have never made if I wasn't a debater, to be very honest. I think yeah. it just gives you a different perspective to things. If I was not a sports law, if I was not in debate, I think I would have been a lecturer now in <laughs> the University of Calabar yeah. or something. I think I would have been doing less. My dad already, you know, had this mindset. My dad is a professor, was the deputy vice chancellor of the university. He already had this whole thing lined up. Yeah, you get a job in the university, work in a law firm on the side. But somehow I just wanted something more, like a more global experience. Like I, I just thought that I, I, I did, I, I knew that I could be like, I could be more. I could like, like there, there was some kind of greatness out there that yeah, debating yeah. made me taste. And, and um, I just felt like it was there. Um, it was, it was, it was there for, for the taking. So like debating, I think just improves your mind, the quality of your mind, improves your, your thinking, and uh, the people that you meet also yes. like right now the network I, ha I have i have had access to it's amazing because i know people now who are working in different fields you have i have friends in different countries of the world i know i have friends who are doing well who i can seek for advice like aurelia is one of my mentors mm -hmm. like i met her through debate so i think the tangibles are just so 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 incredible and mm -hmm. for me like if i have kids like they're all going to debate because i know it does something really really unique to your mind and the evidence is just to maybe four years ago i would spend more time explaining but i mean the evidence is too glaring now mm. like about mm. how debating has improved us the evidence is quite tangible you see all these people doing big things in in different um spheres like i mean look at jamie now he's a top shot he, on twitter he has over 100k followers he's one mm. of the biggest mm. commentators in south africa oliver dixon the same all these guys like true debating you know like true debating just through advocacy, speaking, is is the skills that you get from debating you think are unimportant, but they are really, really, really tangible yes. skills. They are really, really important skills, and and I mean, for me, it's an, it's something that I don't think anyone should really seek so much conviction, like in it's it's there. Like I don't think anyone should be they should be you should spend so much time trying to convince mm -hmm. anybody. The, the evidence is just the evidence incredible. is tangible. Before before you leave, would you just like this? This is a big platform. Um, yeah. Saying this with all faith, um, is there anything <laughs> yeah. you're, you're working on that you'd like the world to perhaps know about? Just learn about, like, just um, put it out there for everyone. No, yeah, for me, like, for me, um, right now, like, all I'll say, like, is if you're interested in sports and sports law, like, my LinkedIn is there, like. You can reach out to me, like if you have ideas in the sports law, in sports sector generally, because I mean sports law is just the legal side of law, but um, my my experience is more expansive, and I have many people reach out to me on Twitter and all those kind of things. 
like for giving me some things to do for them, some jobs, like, you know, draft a contract about this or legal advice or stuff like this, or just wanting to know about the space. I have um, a newsletter on LinkedIn that I, I write. I mean, I've not written so frequently because my last two articles I had to publish in like reputable journals. So I've, I kind of neglected my, my blog, but I have read like seven or eight articles that are really, really good. And if anyone wants to understand the sports law ecosystem, I think, it's a good place to start in. So that's so. Thank you first for giving me that um, opportunity to sell my my market. <laughs> no, to, no, with, with pleasure. We we should say thank you for um, uh, gracing the show. I think I think it's been an incredible, incredible discussion that like yeah, would, would set would really set the tone for like um, other episodes. And um, thank you for making the time um, out of your very busy schedule. I'm sure you're supposed to be in the gym by now. But yeah, bro. Anyway, that's a bike. All right. So we'd like to wrap up. So that wraps up um another episode of the Shafts podcast. And we hope everyone did enjoy it. Um, would like to also say big thank you to Faithfulness uh Kiela Okom, um, who shared his valuable insights, especially about the African continent. Uh, their passion and expertise is what makes this possible. So if you've loved what you heard and want to stay connected with us. Would, would encourage you to subscribe to all of our platforms is the shafts podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms also on youtube uh, google podcast spotify and don't forget to leave um, as a review or feedback if you have any discussions on any topic we are always um, happy to pick it up and then do uh, delve into into this um we we hope to see you the next time and uh hopefully have another lo lovely discussion all right bye bye